This is a Factor OT van, which at 6.3 kilos for the actual bike here is one of the lightest disc brake road bikes in the world right now. So if you're a weight weenie and you love ride up climbs, then this is definitely a bike to put on your shortlist. But is it any good? Well, in this video, I'm gonna review the bike, talk about ride and handling and how it actually climbs and go through the tech details as well. So let's dive in. So the bike is designed primarily for climbing as fast as possible and designed for the pros to do that with a number pin to a jersey. And the new version, this generation two, is lighter, stiffer and more aero than the old bike it replaces. So on the weight front, this whole bike here is 6.3 kilos with SRAM Red and the company's own wheels and handlebar and stem and have a finishing kit and that's well under the UCI weight limit of 6.8 kilos and that is fantastic for the pros who want their bike with disc brakes to be as light as possible. And quite a few bikes in the pro peloton are actually quite a bit heavier than that weight limit. So for a bike to be bang on that limit by the time you add all the GPS sensors and other governance they need to make the bike race ready, is pretty impressive and shows how far road bikes have developed that a bike like this with electronic gears and batteries, hydraulic disc brakes and aero features is offering no real weight penalty over what you might have had five or 10 years ago. But it's not the lightest bike in the world. A specialized S-Works Athos is 5.9 kilos or possibly lighter depending on the build. And the brand new specialized Tarmac SL8, which came out after this bike launch, is 6.6 .6 kilos, but with all the supposed claimed aero benefits it probably offers over the bike we have here. The interesting detail on the weight front is the frame weight. Factor claim 730 grams for a size 54, which isn't really that impressive. And to put that frame weight in context, that Athos I mentioned earlier is a sub 600 gram frame, about 585 or something like that. And a new Tarmac SL8 is 685 grams. So the frame is actually quite heavy on its own. The real secret are these wheels. These are a brand new wheel from the company's own uh, accessory brand, Black Ink. 28, 33 profile, mixed profile, mixed depth, carbon bladed spokes, and they weigh 1,146 grams, which definitely puts them in the uh, super lightweight wheel category. And I will mention the Tarmac SL8 quite a few times throughout this video because when this bike came out, it really impressed because the weight was absolutely amazing. But then the Tarmac SL8 came out a few weeks later with a frame that's lighter and yes, the overall build is a bit heavier, but you have a frame that's arguably probably more aero and deeper section wheels than we have here. So the weight is pretty good as a whole, but maybe not as a frame set, but weight wasn't the main objective with the bike. Aero and stiffness. And you can see, if you look closely, the photos don't really do it justice, or the video, should I say, but in the flesh, you can see the shape of the down tube, that truncated profile, the D-shaped head tube and the seat tube and the seat post as well. And of course, the handlebar and stem, which is probably where most of the aero claims actually come from. And the result is a claimed 12 watt drag reduction over the old bike. And they say it's only five watts slower than the Ostro Fam aero bike, which is very impressive on paper. But to my experience, riding a bike compared to other bikes in the category, like the Tarmac, my giant TCR, the Trek and Mondo, the list goes on, this bike doesn't feel especially fast. And it's probably partly down to the wheels on the bike. They're not a deep section aero wheel. I did swap the wheels for some MV 4.5s and it did have a boost in aero and better performance when you are trying to ride at 35 to 40 k an hour where the deep session wheels allow you to hold those speeds more easily, but with the weight penalty they offer. But without putting the bike in the wind tunnel and doing some comparative testing, it's difficult to put a real kind of finger number on how aero it actually is compared to rivals in this category, but doesn't feel like it's really helping you when you want aero to really kind of matter the most on flatter roads or shallow climbs. As well as the aero, they've also beefed up the stiffness of the frame, which apparently was a Achilles heel of the old bike. So a bigger down tube, beefer head tube, bigger junction down here by a T47 bottom bracket, bigger chain stays and so on. But we'll find out how stiffness 
compared to other bikes when we go for a ride in a bit. We must talk about price and value for money. And this bike here with SRAM red ETAP axis, the black ink wheels, the black ink handlebar stem, and a set of tire saddle and lots of carbon and the 6.3 kilo weight is 11,800 pounds, which is a hefty amount of money. And if you want a power meter on this bike, which this one doesn't have, then you're looking at 12,200 pounds. And for comparison, a specialized Tarmac SL8 with the same group set, but with a power meter and Reval deep session wheels is 12,000 pounds. And it's not often a specialized is better value for money than a rival. There are bills starting from under 10,000 pounds with Ultegra and Force, and you can buy a frame set with the handlebar and stem for just over 6,000 pounds, which is still a serious amount of money when you get Tarmac and Pinarello and Carnago and giant TCRs for four to 5,000 pounds. So I know that handlebar is adding value to the overall package, but it's still a big chunk of cash. Okay, let's talk about how the bike rides. And like I said earlier, I've been riding the bike for quite a few months now and living with it as an almost daily ride, using it to try and challenge myself on my local climbs, the ones I hate, the ones I quite enjoy. I prefer a kind of long, steady climb with a few hairpins, a nice alpine climb is my cup of tea, not the real steep, short ones we tend to get around here where I live in the Cotswolds. And riding the bike, well, it's clear within a few miles that the low overall weight provides a thrilling and sensational ride experience. It really is quite remarkable and quite exciting how this bike rides compared to other bikes I usually ride, which are several kilos heavier. One of the bike's notable features are, of course, the wheels. They are crazy light and they really impact the way the bike rides in an exciting, dynamic, and positive way. The bike feels amazing when you're riding out of saddle. It feels really lively, really agile, really quite energetic underneath you. But the wheels do contribute to the way the bike rides so much that I swapped the wheels for some MV 4.5, so much heavier, much more airy wheel set. And that really dampened the enthusiasm of the bike on a steeper climb. So it's clear that the weight of the wheels makes a big impact to the way the bike rides, which is no surprise with the testing I've done on different wheel weights and rim depths over the last few years. With these wheels fitted, it is a potent setup if you like riding on heels as fast as you can and trying to bag yourself a Strava KOM along the way. So the bike, if you are a weight weenie and you love climbing for days, it really will satisfy your urge to fly up the climbs as much as you can. So it's naturally good at stomping up hills. It's also pretty good coming down as well. Really good handling, nice neutral geometry, typical race bike geometry, so short wheelbase, steep angles, short chain stays as well, so very snappy, a very good level of communication from the tires and the wheels through the contact points, so you really can feel the road surface and the amount of grip available to you, and does descend very well. And the benefit of these shallow wheels is how stable they are in strong crosswinds. These wheels aren't bucked around, the bike isn't thrown offline, it really holds its place on the road really well and feels confident and very secure. So a bike that goes down as quickly as it goes up. And despite the low weight, there appears to be ample stiffness from the frame when you are powering up the climb as well, especially when you're sprinting out of a saddle. The front end doesn't seem to flex unduly and there doesn't appear to be any kind of wiggle or waggle from the bottom bracket area, even with my quite low weight on the bike and my measly power output. I can't really feel the frame flexing underneath you, which I think was an issue with the old one. But then the aero benefits or the aero claims of the frame don't really feel that substantial or that noticeable away from the climbs or even on shallow climbs, but on flatter roads, because a bike needs to be a good all-rounder as well as a good climbing bike, unless you just live in the mountains. But I ride flat roads as much as I ride a climb. So a bike, while designed for climbing, still needs to excel everywhere else to be one bike you ride and not save it for climbing, and then have another bike you ride on flatter stages. I don't know many people who ride bikes in that way. Let me know if you do, but leave a comment down below. So away from the hills, the bike doesn't seem to have the same speed or make riding fast feel as easy as other bikes. Even 
the tarmac or TCR, which aren't out and out aero bikes, feel faster and make it easier to hold high speeds like 35 to 40k an hour compared to this. So the aero claims don't appear to be stacking up really, but I haven't done any wind tunnel testing to re really verify that for sure. But if you buy this bike and put some deep aero wheels in it, you're adding more weight and you're losing what makes this bike the exciting package it is with these lightweight wheels fitted. The geometry is typical race bike fare, but one change over the old bike is to raise the stack by 10 millimeters. Apparently they say that even the pros have a higher front end when they're climbing, but I'm not sure I really agree. I don't really see why I want the handlebars to be higher when you're climbing compared to on the flat. And the stack as a result is almost 20 millimeters higher than a Tarmac SL8. And that's a bike by all accounts that goes up hills just fine. And I did slam the stem as much as possible, but it's quite a big headset cap on it. And I still found it a bit higher than I would like for a bike, which is a race bike after all. So I'm not sure I agree about that higher stack. So that's something I would like to see change on a bike, have a lower stack, more in line with average race bikes, because it is after all a race bike, although one designed for racing up climbs. So this seat tube, seat mask area does a really good job allowing the saddle to flex back and forth when you ride down a bumpy road. But the problem is the front end feels a lot stiffer than the back. There isn't the same amount of compliance through the handlebars and through the fork and head tube. So what I found is that it's a bike that feels like two halves put together, a stiff front end and a soft back end. And it never had that same balance, that same connection that other bikes do, like the TCR or the Tarmac or the Tracker Mondo. The only bike I can remember that had this sort of disjointed feel was the original Trek Demani when that first came out with the ice speed in the back allowing the saddle to flex, but the front end was really stiff. And it does feel a bit like that, not quite as extreme, but that's something I really found a bit jarring about the bike because as impressive as it is at going up hills, just riding regular roads at normal speeds, it just had that slightly disjointed feel which I never really got my head over or around. So a bit disappointing in that regard. So is lighter really better? Well, some people will tell you that weight is all that matters when it comes to riding bikes, especially when you're trying to overcome the effects of gravity. And I've been riding a bike for the last few months and while the low weight does impress and it's exciting to ride up hills, it's not made me that much quicker up the hills. I'm not blitz on my local Strava KOMs. Once I got used to it, it's not really something that I found came to define the bike as much as I thought it would. So a very niche bike for the climbing purist is a bike set up as it is that would definitely satisfy your desire to ride up climbs as fast as you can. But it doesn't really work for me as an all-round bike, which a bike has to offer. It has to be good going up, down, and across on flat roads. Offer you the aero when you're battling a headwind or trying to keep on the wheel in front of you. And also be light and stiff climbing and be stable and planted going downhill. So the bike that didn't really give me what I seek in a road bike, that all round do everything in balance. Okay, time for my verdict. Should you buy it or avoid it? Well, if you love riding up hills and you're weight weenie and you live for Strava KOMs and you want the lightest overall package, then, and if you can afford it, of course, it is a bike that will satisfy your urges to overcome the effects of gravity. But if you want a lightweight bike, but you want some aero and you want a bike that feels more balanced and just an easier bike to live with as an all rounder, then I think the Tarmac SL8 is probably a better, easier pick or a giant TCR or even a Trek and Monda, although that bike was a little bit hard riding, or even that Merida I rode recently in a high spec would be a better all round option. Because while weight is clearly a big deal for lots of cyclists, it's hard to escape the benefits of an aero bike, especially in one like a tarmac that largely removes the weight penalty that used to hold them back. Anyway, that's my review from my garage of the new Factor O2 van. Let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below. Is it a bike you're interested in? or are there better bikes in this category and price range we should be talking about. And if you want to see my first ride review of the special Atomic SO8, which I know I've mentioned a lot in this video, then watch the video right up here. 
And of course, don't forget to subscribe for more bike reviews like this, hopefully outside when a storm stops by hitting the button down here. But that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon.